Hey, Anthony. Yeah. What do you think about the Supreme Court's decision today to defund the National Institute of Health? Just more money being taken from the masses to help pay for ICE and tax breaks for the 1%. How so? Well, the NIH is one of the world's largest funders of biomedical research, and it's intricately interwoven with the U.S. Uh, public university system. So if you've had any form of complex medical treatment, uh, that's me, by the way, chances are that the NIH helped pay for its research, right? If you've had vaccines or if you've been treated for COVID, the NIH has probably helped pay for the research for those things. If you've done any type of post-grad research in biomed, the NIH has probably helped pay for your research. It's this really massive positive force for public health, uh, American and otherwise, public education in the U.S. and science funding, right? So naturally, the Trump administration has decided to strip nearly $800 million in funding from the NIH for anything related to DEI, right? So that's uh, vaccine research, continued COVID research, gender identity research, and more. This accomplishes three things for them, right? It, first of all, it feeds the MAGA base because anything to do with DEI is a huge talking point for them. It also punishes U.S. universities, which are largely opposed to Trump. And of course, it diverts those $800 million in funds for other things such as paying for ICE or paying for these tax breaks on the wealthy that were a huge part of the BBB bill. Meanwhile, everybody else gets cuts to Medicaid and SNAP. And the Supreme Court's going to allow him to do this? Yeah, so the grant removal was originally blocked by the lower courts, but the Supreme Court has ruled against the block, right? And it's basically the same reasoning as the last few cases, which is that they're saying the lower courts don't have the authority or jurisdiction to make this decision on their own. Never mind the fact that Trump himself doesn't have the authority to make all these cuts, but that's where we are now. Uh, there are still other ways that the funding removal can be challenged. But um, like a lot of these other cases, they'll have to fully go through the other lower courts first. And in the meantime, anybody who relied on this funding for any type of either medical treatment or a, a job, maybe at a university, is going to be out of luck, as intended. How is this going to affect the average person going forward? The average person, not much in the short term. In the long term, you know, we'll be seeing the results of cuts to all these types of funding. But in the short term, the people that are going to be most affected are those, you know, researchers. Uh, so that could be, um, you know, students or international students that have come to the U.S. to do research, professors at universities, people employed by the NIH, right, and anybody working for those people. So it's going to have a big effect on the scientific community immediately. And then, um, you know, there will be effects long term that are the result of that. Like a lot of the changes the Trump administration is making, it's not necessarily going to have an immediate effect. But uh, by the time people start to notice it, it'll be too late to change.